think I have too much caffeine in my system because I'm getting very excited. But this is why I do it. it this is just so much fun. Even showing you guys how to do this so you can make your own games. This is just so much fun playing with this stuff. Anyway, let's get on with it. So we have our static object created. And from that we can manipulate the alpha to generate our static effect, our full screen effect. So we need to tie this in with our health now. So this is where we're dealing with all our health. Let's just tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so now we somehow have to calculate the alpha. Okay, before I even jump into that, let's put some of the things together we've learnt in the past few videos. What are we going to do here? Okay, we have a static game object. And then we have a renderer component attached to that object. And we want to modify it somehow. Okay, even taking a step back, while I look at this plane object, we have a collider. Now, our collect papers works off a of raycast, and we are raycasting directly from the camera. So if we're currently raycast, all we're going to pick up is the collider of our static object. So this is going to break our collect papers script. So the first thing we need to do is remove the collider component. Okay, it's still there, it still has a mesh, and it still has a renderer, it just doesn't have a collider anymore. So when we cast a ray, there's no collider for the ray to pick up on. Okay, so we have a renderer component, and on that renderer, there is a material, and the material has a color, and the color has an alpha channel. So first let's try and grab this renderer and store a reference to it. So bar static renderer mm -hmm. okay. spell it correctly and make it one word. And this is a type renderer. Now, as we learnt from all our game object find and get component, let's see if we can find this through script, so we don't even have to assign it in the inspector. So, I'm going to find the var. I'm going to find the static object first. This will be a type game object. And it's going to equal, we have to find it, game object dot find. And we are finding a game object that is named static object. And then we're going to check if we have that. If we have the static object, if it's not a null, The renderer is a component of the object, so we don't have to do anything, any get components or anything like that. So static renderer will equal the static object dot renderer. There we have it. And let's just send ourselves that debug again, just so that we know what's going on if we haven't found it. Okay, so we let ourselves know that obviously there's something amiss in the scene. Let's just test that part out straight up. I compile and we'll cross reference 
with the variable that we left public so we can see. So let's just hit play quickly. Static object. Okay. So our game object finds worked and we've grabbed the component and stored a reference to it. Okay, so we have the renderer. Let's go to the Unity scripting reference and look up renderer. Now I did play with this in the game object find and get component um, tutorial videos. So we want the material on the renderer. Let's open up that script reference. Ah, materials. Okay, material. So, the material of this object. Okay, so the material on the renderer. And even there, we've got the color reference there. Let's expand on that. Okay, so material, the color variable. Because we need to find out how to modify this. Okay, the, the main material's color. So we can set it here, but we want to modify the alpha. So how do we just modify the alpha channel? We have to dig a bit deeper and look into color itself. Here we go. The color is built of the components RGB and alpha. So let's see an example of that. Okay, so we just declare the alpha variable of the color and then we assign it a value. Now I haven't seen anywhere where its maximum and minimum values are. There we are. Okay, because let's just cross reference quickly. If we look at the color, we're seeing in our sliders here the value between 0 and 255. But if we look in the Unity scripting reference, it states each color component is a floating point value with a range of 0 and 1. So it's like a normalized value. So we, if we go and try and punch in 255 into the alpha, it's not going to work like it did in the sliders. We have to give it a variable between 0 and 1. Alright, so let's go see if we can work out how to put all this together. Okay, we have renderer material color. So if we've stored our renderer, we can just say our static renderer dot material dot color. And then back to the color example, then we have the alpha channel of the color we can set there. So let's see if we can punch this into our script. So now we found our renderer. So Let's just create a variable and do the calculations before we modify the renderer. So variable, um, let's just call it new alpha. This will be a type float. This is going to be a number between 0 and 1. And what's it going to equal? Right. So we have a starting health. And we also have our health. So let's just get a percentage of our health compared to our starting health. So that's health divided by starting health. So, again, this is just some maths. So let's put in some pretend values. So if we have our health, which is set to our starting health. So if this was 100 divided by 100, this would return a value of 1. Okay? Now let's say if our health was 20 and our starting... Oops, sorry, I'm pointing the wrong thing. If we said our health is 100, and if we had our starting health at 100, this would return a value of 1. Now if our health was 20 and our starting health was 100, this would return a value of 0 0.2. So there, we're getting our value between 0 and 1. But like I said, our alpha, we want it faded out when we're at full health. So if we're at 100 divided by 100 equals 1, we don't want to set our alpha to 1. So what we do is we know the maximum value is 
So I'm going to take away from 1.0 our calculated health percentage. Okay, and now we've calculated what our new alpha will be. We can modify the information on our renderer. So a static renderer, but we're going to access the material and then the color on the material and then the alpha channel. And we're just going to set it to equal our new alpha. So let's just save that. Let Unity compile. Let's come to our player. And there's nothing else we can really look at. All we can do is just run this. Let's just play test this and see if that's punched in. Okay, there he is over there. So as soon as I hit play, we're at maximum health, so we should lose that static effect. that hasn't happened. Okay, it hasn't started modifying until we started to decrease the health. So if I look away, and it's not going down yet because we haven't programmed that in. Alright, so we have a starting alpha of 1. When we hit play, we want to set that to 0. Okay, so going to be using all this. So in the start function, if we found our renderer, then we can immediately modify it. And we're going to hard code that to zero because we want it to not be there. We're going to be at full health. See, at the same time, we're at full health, set the alpha to zero. Now let's try it. Okay, so that's worked, okay? Coming up to him, he's right behind me. There we go. As we look at him, our health decreases and the alpha increases until it's widened out. Now, so far, we've calculated a way and implemented a way to increase the alpha. Now we need to work out how we can bring that back down.